In this video I'll show you how you can read data from and write data to Max Fabric Warehouse using notebooks. And now I'm not talking about TSQL notebooks, but Spark notebooks. This is a brand new feature in Fabric that many people have been asking for, so stay tuned if you want to learn something new. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric Data Engineering. And today we are covering writing data to and reading data from a warehouse using PySpark notebooks. If you would like to check out other videos in this series, the link to the entire playlist can be found in the description. So, the support for writing data to and reading data from Fabric Warehouse using Spark Notebooks is finally here, and I'm excited to show you how to do this. So, let's go to Fabric. Now we're in Fabric, and here I have this example notebook open, that I'm going to use to demonstrate this new functionality. Also, this notebook can be found by clicking the Google Drive link in the description, that will take you to the Google Drive where I have all the materials for my tutorials. But yeah, let's get started. Before you start using this feature, it is good to know that this requires runtime 1.3 or above. So check that the runtime that you are using for that notebook uses runtime 1.3 or above. And if it's not using that, you can go to the workspace settings and adjust that. So let's go to the workspace and then we can click this workspace settings here. And then we can go to the data engineering. And here you find the spark settings and here you find the environment settings. And here you can set the runtime environment for this workspace. And here I have set that to be 1.3. So that connector will work. But yeah, let's go back to that notebook and let's start to discuss the different features in this notebook. Also, before you start to use the connector, you have to do these imports in order it to work. And here I'm just defining this example data that we are going to use to demonstrate the right functionality of this feature. But yeah, let's first connect this notebook to a session so we can get started. And let's connect this to a new standard session and now the session is starting and should be up soon. And now our session has started and let's first execute these imports here. And after that I want to execute this cell that will define that example data. Let's first talk about writing data to warehouse table. And for that we have four different modes, but let's talk about those modes very shortly. Let's first cover the syntax that we have here. Here we have this syntax how we would write data to a warehouse. So basically we are saying dataframe.write.mode and for that mode we are going to specify one of these modes here and then we are saying dot synapse SQL. And for this synapse SQL we are going to use this three part naming convention. So we are specifying the warehouse name, schema name and table name. And with this syntax, we are able to write data to a warehouse table, to a warehouse that is in the same workspace that we are executing this code. So this syntax doesn't work across workspaces, but we are going to also cover how you can write data across workspaces shortly. But yeah, let's first talk about these four different modes that we have for this write function. And this is actually optional to specify the mode, and if we don't specify the mode, then it will use this error if exists mode. And what this error if exists mode does, so it says that if destination table exists, then the write is aborted with an exception returned to the callee, else a new table is created with data. So let's try this mode first. So if the table doesn't exist, this will actually create the table, but if it does exist, it will throw an error message. And yeah, let's run this code and let's see what happens. So basically now we are writing the data that we defined there to this warehouse that we have specified here. So that will be my DE series warehouse. And shortly we can see that this code doesn't actually work. And here we can see that it drew an error message. And now I'm going to cover one limitation that this connector currently has. And it is that it cannot really create schemas. So we would have to create the schema first in order us to write tables to that schema. So let's go to our warehouse and let's create that schema there first so that we are able to write data there. So let's run this SQL command and it will create a schema there. And I hope that in the future this limitation is removed and we can actually create the schema when we write the data. But yeah, now we have that schema there and now we can go back to that notebook and try to execute this again. And now this should work since we have created that schema. And now it went through fine and we can go check out our warehouse and see the table there. So let's refresh our warehouse. And here we can see the person table and then we are able to 
query the top 100 rows from there and we can see see the data in this table and here we can see that now we have that example data there but yeah let's go to the notebook again and let's try to execute this again and now this should draw an error message and there we have the error message since the table does already exist there and this will result to an error message and now I can clear the output so it doesn't take that much space here. But yeah, then we have this other mode. It's called ignore. If the destination table exists, then the write will ignore the write request without returning an error. Else a new table is created with the data. So if we use this ignore mode, we are able to successfully execute this code, even though that table does already exist there, but we don't get that error message, but we don't get new data to that table. And this went through fine. And now we should still have the same data in the table. And here we only have those three rows there. And then we have these last two modes here. We have the override mode that will override the data. And then we have the append mode that will append the data. And both of these modes will create a new table if the table doesn't already exist. And we can first try the append mode and see that we get some extra rows to that table. So basically now we are duplicating the data in that table since we are writing that same data there. Now let's query 100 rows and now we can see that we have doubled the data there. And then let's go back and let's use the override mode and after using this we should only have those three rows there once again. Now let's go back to that warehouse and here we again have those three rows. And next let's talk about writing data across workspaces and it can be also done but we have to specify the workspace id when we are doing that because warehouse names are not globally unique and we can have the same warehouse name in different workspaces and here we have the code that is able to write data across workspaces and i'm writing data to this another workspace that i have that is this dp700 lab workspace where i test the functionality for my dp700 course but yeah we're going to write that data to this warehouse dp700 here and we're going to write it to the dpo schema so that the scheme already exists there and we don't have to create it and let's run this and let's see what happens and now it is running and we are using the override mode so it doesn't care if the table already exists there and it is running and should be done soon and now it is done and we can go and check out that do we have that table here and let's refresh the tables and here we can see this person table and we should have that familiar three rows of data here once this loads up and here we can see that data and next let's cover the read functionality of this feature but before we do that i would like to know that i spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you and that's why i would like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more max fabric data engineering content it doesn't cost you anything and i would highly appreciate that also, if you'd like to support the channel with a cup of coffee, you can do so by clicking the buy me a coffee link that can be found in the description. But now let's continue with the video. And next let's talk about reading data. And reading data works in a very similar way to writing data. But here we are also able to read data from a lake house, since we can use the lake house's TSQL endpoint to read data. But yeah, with notebooks you can of course use the Spark interface as well to read data from a lake house. But with this you are also able to use the TSQL endpoint of the lake house as well. But now we are focusing to the warehouse. But yeah, reading data works with very similar syntax to writing data, but now we don't have to specify that mode since we don't have different modes for reading data. But yeah, with reading data, we also have to use that Synapse SQL function and provide that three-part naming convention. And also a good thing to note here that we can also, of course, read data from views. But yeah, let's try to read some data. And here we are reading data from the person table that we just wrote there in that previous section. And now let's run this and let's display that data. And we should see that familiar data here very shortly. And here we can see that familiar three rows of data. And when we are reading the data, we are reading it to a Spark data frame. So we can use things like filters to filter out data before we display it or process it forward. And here I'm just filtering the ID to be two. So we are filtering that Bob row there and should finish very shortly. And there we can see that one row with the name Bob only. And next let's talk about reading data across workspaces. And here we have the syntax, how does that work? So in very similar fashion to writing data. So again, we have to specify those workspace IDs. And here we have the different syntaxes for Lakehouse's TSQL endpoints and syntaxes for warehouses. 
And with this read functionality, we can also specify the lake house or warehouse ID from which we want to read the data from. But this is not mandatory since warehouse and lake house names are unique within a workspace. So it is enough just to specify the workspace ID. And I would prefer this upper level syntax that is a bit shorter. And here we have one example and we would read that data from that person table that we wrote across workspaces there previously. And we can execute this cell and let's see how does this goes. And once again we can see that familiar three rows of data there. And if you'd like to learn more about this connector you can check out this Microsoft official documentation about this connector. And this pretty much describes the same things that I went through there. And also it is good to note that this works with Scala as well. So if you're using Scala notebooks, you can use this connector there as well. But personally, I prefer using PySpark, so that's why I had all my examples in PySpark. Also, it is good to note that at the time of recording this video, this connector is currently in preview. But yeah, this is all that I wanted to cover today. Let me know in the comment section below, did you already know about this functionality or did you learn this from this video? Also, if you would like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.